was a time tulikaa mahakamani for 7 years. Unyo ku transition kutoka kwenye kuwa msanii paka kuwa a member of parliament na kuwa minister. Hakijawahi kutokea. <laughs> so not, not even this is not common. <laughs> Lakini mimi nilikuja na moyo safi kabisa. Kuna vitu nilikuwa navisema bungeni, kuna vitu namfuata waziri wa. Who is he? What what what's his journey? Because as of right now if I look at you, you just say alhamdulillah he looks his good. Na nataka kukusanya mirabaha na kuigawa kwa wasanii, wasanii wa endelee kufaidika zaidi. Vitu tunavifanya naona a marriage alafu vinafanikiwa. And then I remember you also said you went to school without Those, those challenges until today to who you are vitu vyote nilivyosema nilivisema pale kwa sababu usilalamiki hata siku moja another mc with an s yeah with an msc ulijiandaaje transition na ukaweza kushinda in your first time on your first attempt au naoenda kushindana nao wakitengeneza checklist zao kama za kwangu nani anapata marks za juu wengi kuamini kwamba umaarufu tu unaweza ukawanunulia nafasi za siasa especially kwenye ubunge followers wako hapo jimboni unakwenda kuwapigia kura bro 7 years upate show za jamaa uh, wanakufungia milango yote mimi nilizuiwa mpaka jamaa walikuwa wanadhamini a certain show nimeenda kama mwangaliaji na nikazuiwa kuingia So welcome to Make Your Own Destiny podcast, the podcast that inspires you to shape your future. So today we are graced to have a very extraordinary guest who is blessed to be wearing many hats. He's not just a celebrated Tanzanian artist, but also a member of parliament representing Muheza constituency and also a deputy minister. His story is very inspiring because He came from rags to riches. Please join us in welcoming an incredibly talented artist, Mwana FA. Today, we're going to dive into his life journey, how he makes his own destiny when all the odds were against him. Stay tuned. This is a very important episode that you don't want to miss. As always, I'm with my co-host Monty. Before anything, just like, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. When I say you're welcome. Asante. So my question, my first question here starts with obviously we know we know you a lot of people know you as Mona Fe, but a lot of people don't know Hamis Minjuma. Some of the officials know Hamis Minjuma, some people just know Mona Fe because of the well-known artist. So when you come to differentiate the two, who is Mona Fe and who is Hamis Minjuma? Uh, that's an interesting question. Because uh Uh, kwanza uh, there are sometimes ambayo nashindwa uh, kujua who made who at this point in time at this point uh, in my life because uh, now we, we, we all know Hamisi Mwinjuma uh, alikuja kwanza and then uh, he created Mwana FA but then in collaboration between Hamisi Mwinjuma and Mwanaife then me met this Hamisi Mwinjuma again <laughs> so so uh, sometimes it's even uh, it's hard even for me kuweza ku differentiate between these two people but hawana uh, tofauti uh, sana every one of them is a teacher every one of them is trying to inspire and uh kutoa ushahidi unaonekana unaoishi uh, for everyone to see kwamba challenge mapingamizi sio mwisho wa maisha na ni kwamba vitu vingi vinawezekana uh, kama tu watu watendelea ku focus so uh um, hamisi mwinjuma would say a uh, uh, peasant kid from muheza Uh, grew up kijijini going to school sometimes with no shoes uh, no father around uh, but i was enjoying life even back then na sikuwa hata naona you know nilisoma mahali anasema uh, kila unapoendelea kujua ndio unapojua kujui vitu vingi i was happy even back then na sikuwa najua vitu vingi kwa hiyo nilikuwa sioni kama nakosa vitu vingi 
wakati mwingine tu na feel the difference kwa sababu wenzako labda wazazi wao wako around na kuna vitu wanavipata wao vipate lakini all of them nafikiri uh, vimechangia no regrets vimechangia ku create who I am today uh, na uh, yule hamisi mwingiuma akawa naona kwamba bana kuna uwezekano kitu ambacho anakifanya for fun kikawa kazi you know uh, nilienda shule hapa nikaenda nikawa nafanya kazi bank nbc and then uh, i went back to school for my master's degree in the uk i came back a friend of mine a brother was a boss of the bank now and he he's like uh, you can come back if you want kile naweza ku risk it nikafanya vitu vingi mtaani kuliko kurudi kufanya 9 to 5 zile you, you understand so uh, ni kwa sababu tu nilikuwa naona there are opportunities na sitaki ku play too safe kwamba niende kazini tu nika limit uwezekano wa vitu vingi vingine kutokea na nikazuia na kama ni if, if, I, if I went back to to work uh, for the bank I think we wouldn't have been here today kujadili hivi tusingefika hapa. So exactly what I'm telling you kwamba no regrets uh, kila kitu ambacho kimetokea kwenye maisha yangu kimechangia kina mchango in, in uh, making of this guy you are sitting here with. You mentioned in that uh, that when you came back there was two options taking a risk of saying you're not going to be employed or going back to work in NBC. My father always tells me that I'm in uni right now. He always tells me that you go to uni, I do not want you to come work for anyone. Come work for yourself. Now, for the people that are out there, some people think that to make it in life is to be employed. You have to be employed and when I'm employed, I'm very safe, things are going on. For such a thing, do you think you 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 are a testimonial that Sometimes taking a risk is a better way is a better route than being employed. So what do you think of the two? I mean being employed is not a problem, but do you think when you're employed you should just stick with your mindset that I'm employed I'm safe? Or what do you think as such a person should be thinking about? Uh, 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 my uh, my wisdom on this one. Ni kama wisdom yangu when telling people uh, I'm not telling people I won't tell anybody don't get married right now but if you want to get married i'm supporting you 100 percent mm-hmm. that's the thing uh sasa take it when you his situation kwamba uh what i'm telling you kuchukua risk kuna faida nyingi to play safe kwenda kazini kila siku ni kama umejiwekea siri yani you are safe chini hakuna miba lakini huwezi kuruka zaidi ya hapa with a, uh, taking a risk ni kwamba hakuna ceiling lakini ukitua vibaya unaweza kukanyaga miba na chupa upo chini you understand what i'm saying so uh usiwezi kumwambia mtu yote achukue risk asiende kazini asijaribu ku play safe kwa sababu uh, a lot of people wana uh, different backgrounds za maisha na not playing safe sometimes it's very hard kwa mtu hata kufikiria kwamba naweza kujaribu ku play safe so uh, kila mtu anatakiwa aone namna ambavyo anafikiria uh, wakati mwingine una bet lakini zinatakiwa kuwashua bet in a way or another utawaambia watu wa take risk hapa wakati hawajajipanga wataenda mahali waje wa kuumu warudi kwako wa kuumu kwa wewe ndio uliwaambia wafanye hivyo so uh, nafikiri kama unaona una mipango inajitosheleza una uwezekano mkubwa wa kufanikiwa you can take those, those risks lakini otherwise na kama una background ngumu kidogo pengine una mlongo wa watu unakutegemea wewe na you can provide by playing safe do it so so you talked about the marriage part and about advising people to marry or not to marry I remember growing up I used to listen to your music a lot and I really love your music. So I know one of your songs was called Badoniponipo. Mm-hmm. So 
So when you released that song, what were you thinking in your mind? And right now, you're a married man, you have a family, you're a family guy. So what really changed from that pardon for Nico to getting married and having a family? Uh, first of all, I didn't say I will not get married. I said, but you need to quiet. So, so uh, 2007 song uh, can be as relevant to me, yeah. at least in 2024. 20, <laughs> you understand? Uh, those are like what? 17 years now. Yeah. I mean, you say, but you need to I didn't say I won't get married. Uh, so, Muda Ulivofika. I had to. Mm. Uh, mm. Like, mm. I have a friend, a brother, and I told him, I So, I can be a Kunamze Moja, he was uh, working with. I want to find a cousin in mm. one And this is 2007. He was listening to Badu Niponipo, and I said, katika wakati nimesikia mtoto mdogo katufundisha mpaka watu wazima wazee jinsi ambavyo hicho uh, kiwanda cha ndoa kilivyokuwa na mapatashika ni huu everything he said kuanzia mstari wa kwanza mpaka wa mwisho truth lakini hii haiku haizuii mtu yote kwenda kuoa kuna watu wengi tu ambao ndoa zao zina zina furaha na wanatengeneza familia wana raise their kids vizuri na kadhalika lakini kuna uh, watu wengi ndoa zinawashinda hali kadhalika aenda divorce rate inaongezeka kila kukicha so uh, mimi as an artist i had to address it uh, i had to address it na vitu vingi vilikuwa vinatokea na binafsi nilikuwa na hasira zangu kuna mahali nilikuwa nimekanyaga miba <laughs> you know, i was i was uh, angry plus i was hungry but then kwa hivyo ikawa ni combination nzuri ikatoa kile kile that's a classic and uh, until today you listen to it na ukiangalia mambo yanayotokea kwenye dunia you can still relate una, unaona kabisa hii kitu ina ina, ina relevance ya kutosha so um uh, kilichobadilika ni swala la muda and uh, nika maamuzi yangu yakabadilika nikaona kwamba naweza ku raise a family na kuwa mtu wa aina nyingine and uh, did that uh, and uh, alhamdulillah uh, everything go, go, is going well yeah. you know on our side when we look at someone like you for example ni deputy minister but also well known celebrity well known rapper we say you are making your own destiny and you have you have reached a point where things are going to your side and you're making your own destiny but for example for me personally i was i wanted to go deep and say who is he what what what's his journey because as of right now if i look at you you just say alhamdulillah he looks as good he's having alhamdulillah he's making his own destiny but what has he went through so what i decided to do is go through your interview with salama and i went through that interview i was like wow I did not know this is what he went through. I did not know that, for example, he said you know you grew up without a father, and then I remember you also said that you had to live with your grandparents at some point. You went to school without shoes. Those all those challenges until today to who you are. For the people that are watching, they're probably saying he just had it easy. They don't know. So obviously, it's all about making your own destiny on our side with our podcast. So we want to request you to just briefly tell them so that they should know that if there's someone watching and they go through something like you. The odds are not against them. They just have to wake up and decide to just go for it. So could you just briefly explain your journey and tell them that what you took from it and how they can also take from it. Ili na wao waweze kuamka kusema da. Kama yeye kaza kupitia na mimi let me go through his challenges na mimi nitaweza kupitia. Yeye anakuanza kunamza kumotivate na yeye aamke. The thing is nilisoma unajua kuna vitu vingine una vi you are doing them without uh, really knowing kwamba unafanya kitu gani kama unaacha alama unafanya short and uh hii miaka kadhaa iliyopita i read uh, a certain book na ilikuwa inaongea inaongelea tu ina ina in summary inaongelea tu jinsi ambavyo uh, kila mtu ana nafasi ya kufanikiwa kwenye maisha na kwamba you only need uh, kupata mahali 
ambapo Mungu amekupangia uende sahihi kitu ambacho wengi tunakikosa it's about uh, connecting uh, connecting your soul and the soul of the universe now when you find your path dunia the whole universe in a conspire kukusaidia uiendee kwa hivyo unaweza kuona mtu mmoja anafanya kitu hicho hicho anafanikiwa na mtu mwingine pengine akakifanya vizuri zaidi akafeli on the uh, very same thing ni kwa sababu tu sio pafia yake hizi ni imani zangu na sio lazima mtu yote yeah. lakini naona they are so powerful kwa kwamba uh, vitu nilikuwa na vifanya kuna vitu nilikuwa nafanya naona kama nina uwezo mkubwa wa kuifanya alafu vinanishinda na kuna vitu nafanya naona I'm average alafu vinafanikiwa you understand uh, dunia nzima ulimwengu mzima una conspire kunisukuma kwa sababu nimeipata njia yangu so as i said mimi na una challenge obstacles haziko kwa ajili ya kumkwamisha mtu yote ni ile ile saying kwamba kisichokiua kuua kinakukomaza so uh, vitu vyote vimepangwa ili u uvyo overcome uh, kutoke a version of stronger you na uiendee path yako uipate uwe umekuja ku save kile ambacho uwe unafanya kile ambacho umekuja kukifanya kwenye kwenye dunia so uh, hata uh, interview na salama mimi nisema kitu ambacho vitu vyote nilivyosema nilivisema pale kwa sababu silalamiki hata siku moja as i said before no regrets pengine mimi ningekuwa na mzee wangu angenilimi kila ndani ende shule tu ni ende zangu nikifanye diploma yangu sio degree ni ende kazini ni hivyo yani pengine ningekuwa limited na just ange wazee wote wanakuwa protective na watoto wao u play safe pengine ningekuwa limited na nisingefika sehemu ambayo nimefika leo lakini uh, naona kama kila kitu kina kilikuja kunisaidia kunikomaza kunifanya ni uh, ni wadu nishukuru zaidi vitu viki, vikija vikiwa vizuri na kadhalika na nadhani kila mtu anatakiwa awe na uh, maono hayo ukiona watu wanalamika sana kuhusiana na vitu vilivyotokea ni kwa sababu vimewashinda ku overcome watu wakiwa na matatizo wakiwa na shida alafu wakafanikiwa kuzivuka hakuna mtu analalamika kila mtu anafikia unaendelea si ume, umepata namna yako umejipata wanasema so uh, nafikiri kila mtu aweke mkazo kwenye kitu anachofanya kila mtu ajaribu kutafuta path yake in life na kuna alama nyingi za kukufahamisha kwamba unaenda sawa kunaendea path yako ama la just fungua macho fungua masikio angalia sikiliza kuna namna tu university atakufikisha mahali unapotakiwa kuwa unajua ku transition kutoka kunikuwa msanii mpaka kuwa member of parliament na kuwa minister sio kitu ambacho ni very common kijawahi kutokea so not not even just not common kijawahi kutokea kijawahi kutokea anakumbuka on your last interview ushe kuulizwa kwamba vipi una mpango wa kuwa na siasa ukasema hujafikiria lakini in the next year kwa na tayari ushe kuwa na siasa na umeshinda so kila kitu lazima mtu umejiandaa kufanya ili ukifanye kwa ubora sasa wewe ulijiandaaje paka ukaweza ku transition na ukaweza kushinda in your first time on your first attempt mambo yalikuwa mengi mambo yalikuwa mengi lakini mimi i had a kwa 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 kabisa i had a checklist asii kama unaelewa i had a checklist nikawa na tiki vitu hiki 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 then i'll go checklist inaonyesha kwanza kama naitaka hiyo kazi tick i, I do kama naweza kuifanya hiyo kazi and this consists of so many things 
kwamba unaweza kudili na wananchi unaweza kudili na serikali unaweza kuwa daraja unaweza kuhakikisha unaweza kufanya lobby miradi ikaja kwako yale matatizo ambayo wananchi ambao unaenda kuwawakilisha kweli unaweza kuhakikisha unayoangalisha na serikali na yanatatuliwa vitu vya namna hiyo naweza kuifanya so tick kwenye nje Christian nao uh, ikaje the the hardest part the hardest part ni kama u, yani ni uchaguzi sasa hizi zinazokuja moja kama una unaweza kukubalika kwa hao wapiga kura yani unaweza kuambia na wako kuelewa kwa sababu in order for you to do all these things nilizosema mwanzoni inabidi kwanza uingie kwenye ofisi si ndio ushinde uchaguzi so Uh, kwa wapiga kura mimi kukubalika na kubalika bahati nzuri sasa mwana FA akaja ina uh, 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 in my rescue unaona <laughs> akaja mwana FA kwa hiyo ikawa rahisi kusema na watu na kubalika we are doing concerts hata sio lazima watu wasikie kitu wanachotaka vitu vyote vile kwa kichwani kwangu lakini hao wanataka kusikia wanataka muziki wewe tutakupeleka ofisini ni wewe tutaenda kufanya ule chofikiria wewe kwa hiyo watu na kubalika lakini pia Uh, finances za kufanya hiyo organization ya kufacilitate hiyo kitu yote unaweza kuzipata so you have to come up with a budget na budget kwa uh, we can afford alafu ikaja nyingine influence you know these countries how they work na influence ya kuweza lobby pa chochote kitakachotokea niweze kupata hiyo nafasi influence nilikuwa nayo vizuri kabisa na me, hata wakati wa kura maoni mimi sikuwa mshindi wa kwanza nilikuwa mshindi wa pili lakini again influence ikaja na kukaja kwa sababu hizi checklist yangu nyingine yote ilikuwa ina tick na ta, wakusanya taarifa walikuwa wanaona hivyo pia ikawa kitu kimoja rahisi na kitu cha mwisho ilikuwa hao ninaoenda kushindana nao wakitengeneza checklist zao kama za kwangu nani anapata max za juu then ningewa naona kabisa ya kwangu inakuwa juu kuliko za wenzangu wote why not kwa hivyo mimi nilipiga hesabu moja ya makosa makubwa ambayo yalikuwa nafanyika na yalifanyika sana 2020 and hopefully sijui tutawezaje lakini nina hakika yatafanyika tena sana 2025 ni watu wetu wengi kuamini kwamba umaarufu tu unaweza ukawanunulia nafasi za siasa especially kwenye ubunge Yaani kwamba mimi kwa sababu fulani na followers milioni nane naweza kwenda kugombea ubunge nikasema followers wako hapo jimboni unakwenda kuwapigia kula bo. Unaweza kwenda kugombea na nikaingia na nika nikashinda. Watu wakienda kwenye kura maoni wanapata kura moja, wanapata kura mbili, you know, kwa sababu hawakuwa wamejipanga, hawakuwa wanafikiri what needs to be done in order to uh, kusema na hao watu na hao waka wakakuelewa. So mimi kifupi kabisa ni kwamba nilikuwa na checklist hii ni topic ya siku nzima yenyewe. Lakini nilikuwa na checklist na nikatiki box zangu zote na nikalizilinganisha na zao zangu nikaona kabisa na wa, na wazidi. That's it. Na hili <laughs> swala la nadii wazidi nayo. Sasa kwa sababu mimi nilitoka huko mtaani na na sababu yangu ya kimtaa na sababu yangu ilionifanya nifahamike nchi nzima na mimi nilienda nikiwa na moyo mweupe kabisa kwamba nataka pamoja na kusaidia constituency yangu lakini i want to help uh, my fellow artist na art kwa ujuma na mimi ni mtu wa mpira na wa michezo kwa ujuma kuhakikisha na wasemea na vitu vina vinakwenda and i did that na mamlaka zikaona bana why if vitu unavyosema usiende kuvifanya mwenyewe kwa hivyo uh, kulikuwa na ka collaboration pale kulikuwa na ka collaboration kale ka Uh, experience yangu ya mtaa ni ya yangu ya dhati ya kusaidia lakini mimi nilikuja na moyo safi kabisa I, I, i didn't care who is the minister kuna vitu nilikuwa navisema bungeni kuna vitu namfuata waziri wakati waziri ni uh, kakaangu bashungwa nilikuwa namfuata wakati kaka, waziri ni kakaangu mchengelwa nilikuwa namfuata yani nawafuata wote na waeleza bana nafikiri iki kitu kinatakiwa kifanyike hivi na hivi bila hata kuchukua points za kwamba nimesimama bungeni kuvisema sisi tuma tuna uh, 
mahali tunataka kukusanya mirabaha na kuigawa kwa wasanii wasanii waendelee kufaidika zaidi lakini system ya nchi ambazo nyingi ambazo zimefanikiwa wanafanya CMO uh, uh, collective uh, management organizations so uh, why sisi hatufanyi so uh, mimi nimeamua bwana mimi nitali advocate ile jambo nilisimamie i did nikali present uh, bungeni kwa sota kama mimi bungeni siku hata kwa hiyo kamati ambayo inahusika na masuala ya sanaa nilikuwa niko kamati inahusika na hesabu za serikali za mitaa huko kwa sababu ya background yangu na kwa sota wakija wanaenda kujieleza kufanya presentation kwenye kamati ya sheria ndogo ili kupitisha ile jambo liende sheria ibadilike mimi naenda kuwasaidia ku present ku lay down their case properly ili mradi jambo lifanikiwe so nafikiri vitu vyote hivi vinaonekana kwa ndio mambo na anania that hivi jambo hata kuwa alikuwa lake lakini anakuja kulifanya ili mradi vitu viende sawa so moyo wangu ulikuwa huko mweupe kabisa niko kwa ajili ya kusaidia na vitu vingi tulivyofanya nafikiri ndio umepewa majukumu mwaka zikaona bwana wewe ndio kimbele mbele nenda akafanye mwenyewe tukafiki hapo lakini pia uh, kwenye struggle zangu there was a time tulikaa mahakamani for seven years tunagombana na kampuni moja ya simu now uh, result ya ile kesi ilikuja kwa watu wengi wanaangalia upande mmoja hear me out si tulipo about a million dollars kwenye matokeo ya hiyo kesi but we, we knew we had a case na jamaa kwa sababu ni utaratibu wa kawaida wanasema common practice ilikuwa kwamba watu wakienda kushtaki wanatishwa tishwa wanaambiwa wape show wafanye nini wana wana ditch hiyo hizo kesi so anasema si utakaa 7 years upate show za jamaa uh, wanakufungia milango yote mimi nilizuiwa mpaka jamaa walikuwa wanadhamini a certain show nimeenda kama mwangaliaji na nikazuiwa kuingia yes but again we have a case so how to now tukaenda tukalipwa million dollar na watu wote wanafikiri kwamba huo ndo ushindi mkubwa lakini ushindi mkubwa ukuwa huo ela the city kati ya hiyo million dollar mimi sina shilingi kumi kati ya hizo ela za huko lakini ushindi ulikuwa kwenye ku set the president ushindi ulikuwa kuonyesha kipi ni sahihi kufanyika kwamba watu wanatakiwa ku stand up for their rights bila kujali wanagombana na nani ili mradi wana uhakika wanachodai ni cha kwao na wanatakiwa kukipata so sisi tulienda tume listen this one tumeenda tumefungua kesi tumefungua kesi tunadai 4 billion right kesi zote za hakimiliki zinatakiwa kufunguliwa mahakamani na definition ya ya, ya mahakama kwenye sheria ile ni mahakama ya wilaya umeelewa mahakama ya wilaya haiwezi kukupa fidia ya zaidi ya milioni 250 kwa fedha taslimu na milioni 300 kwa mali isiyohamishika at the time kwa hivyo si tuna kesi ya bilioni 4 sawa mahakama ambayo tunatakiwa ile sheria ya kimiliki inatakiwa ile kesi ipelekwe ni mahakama ya wilaya mahakama ya wilaya haiwezi kutupa hata robo ya hiyo ya but then knowing that tukaenda tukaifungua kesi mahakama kuu ambayo yenyewe ina uwezo wa kutoa hela kiasi chochote lakini sasa haina uwezo uh, uh, wa kusikiliza kesi ya hakimiliki kwa sababu kesi ya hakimiliki zinatokea kusikilizwa huko so jamaa wakaenda kwenye technicalities wakasema bwana hii kesi mahakama haina jurisdiction ya kusikiliza hii kesi hii kesi inatakiwa irudi chini Oh, kesi yetu ikapigwa chini. In 2011 this one. Ikapigwa chini ikaambiwa hii kesi inatakiwa ikasikilizwe kwenye mahakama ya wilaya kule. So tukaenda na hiyo kesi. Jamani, tunajua nyinyi hamwezi kulipa zaidi ya milioni 250. Si tunadai bilioni 4 lakini mahakama kuu imetuambia tuje hapa. Umeelewa? Kwa hiyo mahakama hii sasa ikaamua kwamba bwana eh tuna inaitwa exclusive jurisdiction tuna exclusive jurisdiction na 
tunaweza kutoa Waka, wakatupa kweli 2 billion na something a million dollar sawa jamaa wakarudi tena wakakata rufaa tena mahakama kuu kuonyesha kwamba bwana mahakama iliyotoa ile hela kule haina uwezo wa kutoa hela hela ile lakini mahakama kuu ya hawa bwana sisi ndo tuli waelekeza kwamba bwana kwa sababu inamaanisha kitu kimoja tu kwamba sheria ilikuwa na gap katikati yani una kesi za kimiliki lakini umezilimit kwamba watu hawawezi kudai zaidi ya kiwango hiki na ndio maana unaambiwa ende chini then 2019 si tumelipo 2019 7 years later 2019 ilibidi sheria ibadilike sheria sasa ya eh, hakimiliki ina kubali shauri lolote la hakimiliki likafunguliwe kwenye mahakama yoyote inayoweza kuofa hicho kinachokwenda kudaiwa so ni kwa nakwambia watu wengi wanaona ushindi wa pesa lakini Bibi mtoto tu nilitoka zangu mdote shule ya msingi muweza huko nimeenda shule bila viatu nimekuja kuibadilisha sheria kwa sababu ya shauri langu huo ndo ushindi mkubwa zaidi mimi nimeenda kushindana na multi billion uh, uh, company na nikashinda huo ndo ushindi kwangu vitu vingine vyote ni vidogo na nafikiri watu wapate picha ya nini hasa mimi nakiona kama mafanikio kwenye shauri lile kuliko kuangalia tu kwamba bwana walilipwa na kabisa kwa kiangalia hiyo sekta ni kwamba the whole point is to change your yani your vision kwamba umetoka sehemu ndogo na wewe unataka kuhakikisha hao watu wadogo unawa treat kwamba wale wapitia unawabadilishia ili mambo yao yaendelee kwa hiyo because other people kama sisi ukiangalia hapo ah mshinda 1 million dollars that's all i care about yes yamo mwingine hawezi kuangalia hawezi kuangalia but they should know that the bigger win is that it is someone ambaye you can't say yani ametoka sehemu ambayo unajua kaenda mtu mwingine ah unatolewa tu wewe umekuja hapa it doesn't matter but umetoka mtu chini uenda kugombana na watu lakini umeshinda hela on top of that the bigger win is that you were able to change sheria na vile vile the narrative yes sheria the narrative everything yani around this thing ilikuwa ni mshindi mkubwa kwa sanaa na wasanii kwa hiyo na nafikiri sasa hivi hata mashauri mengi ambayo unaona yanafunguliwa wanaenda wanachukua president ni ni kesi yetu which is very beautiful to see you know i'm here for it man eh? na watu wote wakija na mashauri yao huyu kawashtaki nani hey kwaje yani nimekuwa mpaka yule msando analiita mimi ana sheria kokwa took so much interest just kwamba uh, nikawa najua mpaka inatakiwa kuwaje kwa hiyo hata watu wengine wote ambao wanakuwa na kesi zao basi kwa shauri bana hapa unaweza kupata hela hapa hii naona itakuwa ngumu nafikiri kumalize na nao wezani. Tu mmoja juu sikaja na kesi na muona kabisa anaenda kushinda. Lakini anamwambia miaka mitatu minne ya kukaa nao mahakamani unayo. Kwa sababu eh, anyway si tulikaa miaka saba lakini tusha set president. Kwa hiyo wewe unaweza lakini bado itaenda miaka mitatu minne mpaka ikija kwenye utekelezaji wa hiyo hukumu utakuwa umechoka uko hoi. So when we go on the whole scope that you're saying for you the bigger one for you is that you are someone who came from nothing but you are able to compete with big a multi billion dollar company and so you, ba- you basically won kama unaweza kuonyesha watu kwamba kama una kesi usiogope nenda kushindana naye jamii nenda na nitoleo ukiangalia mambo ya kubadilisha vitu leo niko naongea na rafiki yangu akamwambia aje mimi leo nakushuta mtu fulani akafurahi akasema niba mimi na swali langu moja ambapo muulize akasema yeye hey, he's in the US playing football right now but when he was in Tanzania he was I was I used to play football but with him and we were playing that we all wanted to make it kufika sehemu lakini unakutani the system with inside it it is very hard for example ukiangalia nje unaweza kusema ni rahisi but the same time is not easy but when you come here it's a bit harder because so unakutani there's no system of anaweza ina to support to fike kwamba tuseme tunakuwa tu, 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 professional Now on that side labda labda ni sisi kufanya kama mimi labda labda I'm not well educated on that area could you please explain kwa yeye anayaangalia na wengine wanaoangalia ambao wanatamani to make their own destiny through football that they want to go through the system in Tanzania so that they can make it play maybe big clubs here or even go abroad what is the system that the ministry wana ad wana wameshaweka ili kuwasaidia vijana ambao wanataka kucheza mpira ukiongelea mpira in that area Uh, yes kumekuwa na wakati mgumu kidogo kwenye njia na madaraja ya kutengeneza uh, watu wetu na back in the day when i was going to school kulikuwa na kulikuwa very serious kuhusu kuhusu umiseta umitashumta umishumta ilikuwa 
na kadhalika na ilikuwa sehemu nzuri kuna mtu mmoja akaniambia yusijuzi hapa akawa ananielezea jinsi ambavyo ananitajia na majina ya wachezaji waliopatikana kwenye umiseta yani una scouts wa Simba una scouts wa Yanga wanakwenda kwenye finali kuanzia siku robo finali za umiseta yusijuzi wanaenda kuangalia watu na wamewachukua wachezaji na wakaja kuwa wachezaji wakubwa kabisa kulikuwa ni namna moja tu wenzetu wameweza kutengeneza academies ni uongo nikisema sasa hivi tutakuwa na academies 10 20 hapa kwa hali yetu unavyojua ili watu wa tujaribu kugroom hivyo vipaji lakini tunaweka mkazo sana kwenye umiseta na umitashumta kwa sasa tukishirikiana na wenzetu ambao ni Tamisemi na Wizara ya Elimu ili kuhakikisha kwamba tunagundua vipaji lakini tunasaidia kuvilea. Pili ambao vinatoka kuanzia shule za msingi tunahakikisha vinapanda vinakwenda sekondari na tunaanza kuangalia kuanzia pale. Pengine tutapeleka scouts, pengine tu watapelekwa wanachaguliwa kwenda kwenye timu ya taifa moja kwa moja kwa sababu kuna U13, uh, under 15, under 15, under 17. Hizi zote ni nafasi kwa ajili ya kugroom na ku lea vipaji. Kwa hiyo the system is not very clear as yet but tunajaribu kila tunaloweza kutopoteza watu katikati. Kwamba ulikuwa na mtu unahisi angekuwa na kipaji kizuri sana lakini kwa sababu ya maisha na kwa sababu hakuna mtu amepay attention kikapotelea somewhere ya katikati. Kwa hivyo sisi tunajaribu toka unapotoka shule ya msingi unapokuja sekondari na kuendelea kuanzia hapo kwenda kuwapeleka timu za taifa na kadhalika tunahakikisha hilo jambo linafanyika moja lakini pia tunatengeneza sasa hivi tumeanza na tuna center of sports excellence kule Mwanza tuna academy kule ya kufundisha walimu wa, wa michezo kule Malia na tunaenda kutengeneza center of sports excellence pia ambapo manake tutakuwa tunakusanya vipaji vya sehemu mbalimbali mbali. tunaenda kuviweka tunawapa walimu tunajaribu kuwafundisha na kugroom hivyo vipaji ili visi, visiweze kupotea na sasa hivi uzuri wake tuna mpaka uh, watu ambao wanatengeneza academy zao binafsi kwa ajili ya kusaidia. Nilikuwa namuona uh, uh, wa jamaa wa shabaka wale. Uh, moja ya vitu aliniambia vilikuwa very interesting. Akaniambia mimi ninachotaka mpaka tunafika uh, 2027 ambapo si tunaandaa AFCON nataka wachezaji wangu waliopita shabaka wanaocheza nje ya nchi wawe wanatosha kabisa kutengeneza timu nzima ya taifa. Kwa hivyo uh, kama ambavyo mheshimiwa rais Daktari Samia Suluh Hassan anatuambia kuhusiana kushirikiana na sekta binafsi kwenye shughuli zetu zote huku serikalini sisi na sisi watu wa namna hii kwa ajili ya kuwapa moyo na kuhakikisha wanatusaidia kutengeneza timu zetu na wachezaji wetu ni kitu ambacho tunakifanya kwa nguvu nyingi sana. Kama e, vision yake, lengo lake la nini anataka ku, kufikia, peke yake linaweza kututengenezea timu tofauti kabisa. Kwa sababu hata hata timu tuliyonayo kusema kweli ukiwa na wachezaji wanaocheza soka ya kulipo katika viwango vizuri, wanne wa tano tu tunakuwa na timu nyingine kabisa. Wala hii timu hii tena. So yeah, tunajaribu na sasa hivi unaona serikali kitu kikubwa inachofanya ni kutengeneza miundo mbinu ya michezo. Katengeneza viwanja, stadiums, zin stadiums, tunatengeneza arena, tunatengeneza academies, tunatengeneza center uh, centers za uh, sports excellence hizo. Kwa sababu hiyo ya mwanza ni ya kwanza na kama pilots lakini tuna lengo la kuhakikisha zinakwenda kwenye kila mkoa ili kuwe na facilities zaidi za watu kuzitumia uh, kwa ajili ya shughuli za michezo mongelea kujenga viwanja vitu tofauti on top of that we are proud to say that 2027 we are hosting afcon pamoja na our neighbor countries Tanzania, Kenya and Uganda as a country tumejiandaaje and what should, as the citizens what should we expect from the team and from the ministry uh, as a country tuko hatua za mwanzoni na tuna miaka kadhaa kabla ya kufikia 2027 Allah Mungu atupe uhai. Uh, lakini hatua ya kwanza ilikuwa kwa ajili ya kutengeneza miundo mbinu ya michezo na sisi kwa sababu tuna tulifanya pamoja bid na Kenya tulishirikiana na Kenya na Uganda 
badala ya viwanja sita ambavyo mwenyeji anatakiwa kuwa navyo sisi tulitakiwa kuwa na viwanja vitatu kila nchi kati yetu kwa hivyo sisi tuna Benjamin Mkapa ambao tunaifanyia ukarabati mkubwa lakini tuna uwanja wa Man Zanzibar ambao ukarabati umekwisha na itafunguliwa rasmi tarehe 27 lakini tuna Jenga Stadium mpya Dodoma na Arusha kwa hiyo tutakuwa uh, kama tunatakiwa kuwa na viwanja vitatu si tuna vinne tayari tutakuwa lakini pia tunafanya ukarabati mkubwa kwenye uwanja wa uhuru na viwanja vingine saba kote nchini ambapo vitakuwa na kiwango kizuri tu worst comes to worst vinaweza kutumika kabisa na hii ni hatua ya kwanza lakini uh, si tunajaribu kuhakikisha tunaunganisha kwa kweli yani tunafanya ile sports tourism ya kutosha kabisa imagine uwe na na mechi na pigwa zake Arusha pale lakini wakati unaenda kwenye mechi umetoka zako Serengeti <laughs> ama ukimaliza mechi kesho yake unaenda kuanza kupanda mlima Kilimanjaro vitu vya namna hiyo kwa hiyo tunataka ku connect tourism na sports moja kwa moja kwa ajili ya kufanya this the most entertaining Afcon uh, finals ever na ni kuhakikishie tunatengeneza mipango thabiti sana na tukifika mahali kila mtu atakuwa impressed sio sio uh, hao tu ambao wageni wetu wanakuja lakini hata wa Tanzania wenyewe hawatakaoamini kwamba kumbe tulikuwa na uwezo wa kufanya vitu vya namna hiyo ukiangalia kwa mfano mashindano ya uh, African Football League uzinduzi wake ambao ulifanyika hapa na Simba akacheza na Al peke yake ilifanya mpaka majirani zetu waseme bana isikizeni hiyo ufunguzi wa Afcon na finali wapendi Tanzania shule imeisha <laughs> <laughs> kwa hiyo na sasa hivi ilikuwa kapis tu ka jinsi ambavyo tunaweza kufanya lakini on top of it tunahakikisha kwamba tunatengeneza timu nzuri itakapofika 2027 tuwe na uhakika wa angalau kufika hatua za mbele mbele tunashiriki Afcon safari hii ya Ivory Coast mara ya tatu lakini mara zote hizo mara mbili ambazo tumeshashiriki hatujawahi kupita hatua ya awali ile. Kwa hivyo si lengo letu ni tuwe na timu ambayo itafika angalau mchecheme mchecheme ikafika robo finali tutakuwa tumefika mahali pazuri zaidi na kunaonyesha kwamba kuna progress kwenye mpira Kwa hiyo kwa pamoja na maandalizi mazuri miundombinu ya michezo tunayofanya kujaribu kuconnect na utalii na kuhakikisha wa Tanzania wengi zaidi wanafaidika na sisi kuandaa mashindano haya lakini pia tunataka kuandaa timu nzuri na tutatengeneza kamati kabisa kwa ajili ya kufuatilia mwenendo na uwezo wa wachezaji wetu dunia nzima ili kuhakikisha tunakuwa na timu inaweleweka sana kipindi kikifika na kwa hiyo ambapo tunaenda Avery Coast timu yetu imejiandaaje Uh, sasa hivi vitu ambavyo tulikuwa tunaweza kuifanya ni kuwa na kambi mwalimu alishaita timu na kambi inaanza tarehe 30 mpaka tarehe nane uh, na itakuwa Cairo Egypt kwa timu yetu itakuwepo pale na tarehe saba itakuwa na mechi moja ya maandalizi ambayo itacheza na Egypt uh, kule kule kwa hivyo uh, unaona tuna improve sasa hivi tuna ukiambiwa kwamba ni sisi tunaweka kambi Egypt kwa ajili ya kwenda Afrika <laughs> unaweza usiamini lakini ndo ndo hivyo tunamshukuru sana mwanamichezo namba moja nchini mama Samia Suluh Hassan kwa moyo wake wa upendo kwa michezo na wanamichezo lakini pia kutufungulia mikono vitu vingi kati ya hivi isinge kuwa hata ndoto kwamba vinawezekana kufanyika kama sio kwa matako ya mheshimiwa rais so manefei you are you are one of the most educated Tanzanian artist. I even remember in one of your songs you said you, I think it was Cheza Bia Kunja Got. You said it's another MC with an MSc. Yeah, with an MSc. So it means you have a master's degree. So you have formal education. So how do you think formal education play a role in someone's career whether it's music career or being a politician? Ah uh, sasa hivi dunia inabadilika kidogo lakini you need a basic na nikisema basic sema ile ya darasa la 7 au ya form 4 sasa hivi you need basic education lakini angalau uwe na ka degree ili kuweza kuimpuka kwenye baadhi ya meza kuweza kuweza kufungua baadhi ya milango na mimi 
na chosema ile ile ni kwa kuambia kulikuwa anakuwa na collaboration ya Hamis Mwinjuma na Mwana FA. Huyu Hamis Mwinjuma ndo alienda shule na kadhalika. Alafu Mwana FA akaja akatengeneza ka ka legacy fulani hivi kamsanii mkubwa na sound ana sound smart ana aishi hafanyi vituko eh? kwa hiyo combination ikawa nzuri na kwa na, na ile education ambayo ilikuepo sasa ilikuwa hata ukimtia kwenye chupa lazima nitatoa kidole haita haita iwezekana kwa hivyo ikawa inabeba kila kitu kina complement each other na kina nisogeza mbele mimi binafsi sasa kwa mtu mwingine yote nafikiri pengine uh, uh, watu wengi wanafanikiwa na sio kwa sababu tu ya formal education ni kwa namna nyingine nyingi lakini nafikiri formal education kwanza inasaidia kupanua uwezo wako wa kuamua huduma zingira inakufungulia nafasi nyingi zaidi na pamoja na kwamba dunia ina move kwenye utekelezaji utendaji zaidi kuliko makaratasi haya vyote lakini ukweli ni kwamba hatujafika huko yet. Na sisi tunataka kuhamisha tuwe na ushahidi kwamba bana wewe unajielewa na tunaweza kukupa nafasi hii ukaifanyia kazi. Mtu mmoja aliniambia Wewe unaita mwana ifai lakini jina si linaanza mwana falsafa. Mtu mmoja akaniambia Mtu mmoja akasema wewe hujasoma falsafa, una udaktari wa falsafa. Kwa hiyo wewe sio mwana falsafa kwa Mwingine akasema hapo hapo alafu ni mtangazaji huyu bwana akasema wana falsafa wote wa kwanza hawakwenda mm. darasani kusomea falsafa nyinyi mnawasoma kwa sababu ya vitu ambavyo wao wanasoma ambavyo wao hawakuvisoma so someone can be siyo kama mnanielewa yeah, yeah. yani uta, uta, utakuja hapa eh una, una msoma Einstein vizuri kabisa sio kwamba alikuwa amesomea ya hayo makili yani kwa yeye alikuja na Newton alikuja na bwana kapandisha tunda sio hii imeanguka sio imefanya nini kama up with those things sio so formal education per se lakini sasa sisi hatukuzaliwa na vipaji hivyo pengine kwa hiyo inabidi tuwasome tupanue uwezo wetu wa kufikiri na iwe mwanzo tu wa vitu ambavyo pengine si tunaweza kufikia kwenye ulimwengu kwa so, formal education inasaidia kwa sababu inapanua uwezo wako wa kumudu mazingira na panua uwezo wako wa kufikiri but watu hawatakiwi kuishi hapo inatakiwa tusiwe tu na elimu ya kukariri tuwe na elimu ambayo inatusaidia ku changanua vitu zaidi na sisi tutengeneze ya kwetu tutengeneze kina Newton wetu tutengeneze kina uh, Einstein wetu hali kadhalika so yeah sio kama nimejibu swali lako sawa sawa lakini uh, it's important watu wapite kwenye mfumo uh, unaokubalika wa elimu ili mbele ya safari waweze kujipambanua wao wenyewe na wao watusaidie kuamudu mazingira tusibaki tu kwenye vitabu ambavyo walivyosoma kabisa. Yes. Kwenye interview yako tena na Salama ulisema kwamba as you said right now no regrets. Everything you went through namshukuru Mungu because nimekufundisha huyu wao nimekujenga and you are happy because you face challenges that have built you. Now mimi ni kijana and I have vijana wenzangu and I feel like from your generation to our generation things have changed. We believe that we want things to come easily. But you also said that good things never come easy. If, you, if something good is not kuja kirahisi rahisi kianza ni kwa nacho. So for the vijana wenzangu ambao tunaangalia na sisi mwenyewe pia nitakuchukua the advice what have you got to say for the for us that we whenever we face a challenge like ah that's it I can't do this like what 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 exactly do you think they should do when the challenge is faced and how should they take it instead of just being some very easy like whenever a challenge is coming I'm done with this I can't do it anymore nafikiri ushauri wa kwanza ulikuwa hapo kwenye kauli yako ya nukuu ulipata kwenye interview na salama ni kwamba vitu vingi haviji kirahisi. Kwa kirahisi uwezekano wa kupotea kirahisi ni mkubwa na uwezekano wa kwamba kila mtu anacho na kitakuwa kina thamani yoyote ni mkubwa hali kadhalika. Uh, mimi ningefikiri uh, ushauri wangu unapaswa kuwa vijana wa focus. Kwenye vitu wanavyofanya wavifanye uh, kwa asilimia mia moja. Uh, kila kitu hata kama hakijapangwa kuwa ndo destiny yako ndio uh, path yako lakini ukikifanya kwa asilimia moja experience yake inaweza kwenda kukusaidia uko mbele ya safari na kwa hiyo kadhalika 
So mimi the way I see it ni kwamba hata mambo ambayo leo hii siyaoni kama yana yalikuwa na sababu yoyote kwenye maisha una kutana na situations ambazo zinafanya unakumbuka situation iliyotokea kule japokuwa haikukusaidia moja kwa moja. Kwa hiyo vijana wa focus watie mkazo kwenye mambo ambayo wanayafanya kwa sababu yote yanatumika ku build up where they want to go. Regardless kwamba hiyo ndio path walio walioichagua na inatakiwa ku kwa kuwafanya waishi kwenye 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 dunia hii ama la lakini kila kitu kinabidi kila mtu akifanya at 100 na uh, kisaidie ku build up where you go. Kwa mfano sisi wenyewe hapa we have been doing this podcast for 10 months right now but hatuja pata any monetary gain. So when you started music ili kuchua muda gani mpaka ukasema ah sasa hivi kipaji changu kinanilipa. Uh, <laughs> Kwanza mimi zamani wakati nasoma Tanga School, mimi I went to Tanga School. Wakati nasoma Tanga School kulikuwa na mashindano ya rap mtaani. Sasa mmoja ilikuwa ni Splendid, kumbe ilikuwa ni Splendid. Sio mbaya na mimi. Ah nimeshawahi sio mara moja sio mara mbili kwenda kulipa kiingilio ili nikaimbe ndani. You get that? Nalipa kiingilio mlangoni ili nika, na naingia ndani niombe nafasi kwa DJ ili nichane kwa sababu watu wengine washa ana pale mimi nime tena na shule nimetoroka shule yenye kwetu ni boarding Sasa nakwambia hili kwa sababu kuna mambo mengi ambayo unatakiwa kupitia watu wanaiona zile fruits tu za mwisho lakini kweli ni kwamba kuna njia ndefu ya kuzifikia uh, mara ya kwanza kabisa mimi nime bahati nzuri baada hizo stories za tanga kote na nini mimi nimetoa wimbo wa kwanza mwaka 2002 mm. in 2002 wakati nimetoa wimbo show yangu ya kwanza ni melipo ya 50 na i thought ni hela nyingi sana mm. eh? kama mbona nimekwambia wakati na kusimulia kuhusu kesi yangu ile na kampuni ya simu ushindi mkubwa au tu kwenye kwenye uh, fedha ushindi mkubwa unakuja kwenye ku achieve kile kitu unachokitaka kama hilo ndio lilikuwa lengo lako kama lengo lako ni fedha maana yake wewe lengo lako ni dogo eh? lengo lako ni dogo na hizi hela zinabidi zije kama outcome tu ya wewe kufanikiwa kwenye lengo lako la kwanza lengo lako la kwanza ifaa kwa kuwa na podcast fulani namba 1 kwenye nchi si ndio na kuwa na podcast ambayo watu wengi they look up to it wana vijana wengi wanataka kujifunza vitu eh, wanataka ku na vijana wengi wengine wataki kutengeneza podcast kama ya kwenu pia eh, that's ndo success yenyewe alafu kwa sababu podcast yako ni namba moja now hela ndio zita zitakuja unaona muziki wengi ambao wanaingia kwenye muziki kwa wrong reasons. Wrong reasons kwa maana kwamba mimi namuona Diamond huyu amepata maela eh, kazi kibao zinamwangukia eh, na umaarufu mkubwa. Unamuona mara yuko na mawaziri, yuko na president na vitu vya namna hiyo ilo alitakiwi kuwa sababu ya watu kuingia kwenye muziki. Yaani sababu ya kuingia kwenye muziki ni watu wagundue kwanza wana kipaji na watake dunia ione kipaji chao ubora wa kipaji. Alafu dunia ikikubali sasa ndio tunakuja kwenye swala la, la hela. Kwa hivyo tuna tatizo hilo na naamini uh, mindset zitakuja kubadilika watu wakiendelea kujelimisha zaidi. I think that is a big problem to my face. Mm-hmm. Everyone then I think probably inaanza kusha kwanza kufikiria hela. I don't think whatever you're doing will make a lot of sense but first you have to first define why you're doing it. You're doing it. And the reason kama sisi tulivyosema when we started we said we are the podcast that empowers you to shape your future. Mm-hmm. Na sisi tunaamini through this story that today you're providing us mimi mwenyewe nimechukua mambo mawili matatu kuna wengine inaweza kumbadilisha maisha yake. And when that happens to us 
that was worth more than a million dollars. So we hope a that... A bag shouldn't come fast. Yes, and we hope that continues too. We hope we we'll keep inspiring you guys. We hope we we'll keep bringing better guests. And every day we have a new guest that helps you to make your own destiny. But to come back, I uh, use your tomorrow night to host events, Connectors Club. Now the theme is mentoring and support networks for entrepreneurs. Now I'm going to tell you about mentors. When your journey ya from being a rapper, now deputy minister, were there any role models or mentors that uh, guided you through your journey? And kuna umuhimu gani unaona kuwa na mentor? Yaani mtu ambaye anza akakuguide kwenye mambo yako. Maana kuna wengine kama watu wako na mheshimiwa pale wanasema siku ya siku ya event kwamba we think we know everything but we don't. You need someone to help you to guide you through some things and uh, balozi ulanga alikuwa anasema kwamba yeye kuna mwanamke alimfuata akamwambia kwamba mimi na biashara yangu alikuwa anaingiza uh, certain amounts let's say 10000 but after 5 years on being gui- being guided by him she got 10x the amount that she got that she was making as revenue and he told us the moral of the story is that she could have been making the same amount alikuwa anafanya alikuwa anapata lakini kwa sababu alikuwa na mentor ameweza kutoka ile amount mpaka 10x kwa kwa upande wako what is the importance of mentorship and nani anakuwa nakumentor kwenye hizi stage zote mbili ah uh, mimi kweli <laughs> na, na, na fahamu umuhimu wa, wa, wa mentorship kwa sababu uh, hata uki wanakuambia hata baba mmoja hatoshi ndio maana you need a god father to lakini uh, naona kama tunalichukua vibaya kwa maana kwamba si tunachofanya ni kutaka kuona yani kutaka msaada badala ya kuwa kusaidiwa kichwani sio kama unaelewa si tunataka good father kwa maana kwamba umemaliza shule utatafutiwa kazi moja kwa moja sio umeanzisha biashara utatafutiwa mtaji moja kwa moja ndio tuna, tunataka watu wa hivyo na tuna wa, angalia kama mentor. Lakini ukweli ni kwamba tunachotakiwa ni kujielimisha kwenye namna walizopita through their experiences na vitu ambavyo their own experiences na vitu ambavyo wanaweza kuwa wanavyo kichwani hata kama sio experiences zao binafsi kuhusiana na dunia. Dunia ina vitu vingi. Na waje nasema unakumbuka ule msemo wa kwamba tunajifunza kutokana na makosa ndio akasema ukisubiri ujifunze kwa makosa yako uh, utaondoka duniani hujamaliza hata 10% ya kitu ambacho ulikuwa unatakiwa kukifanya kwa hivyo namna rahisi ni kujifunza kwa makosa yako na makosa ya watu wengine kila kitu kinachokuja na that's where uh, mentorship comes in kwamba bana nafikiri jambo hili lishatokea kwa picha hii likaja hivi likaja hivi na nafikiri likifanywa hivi sasa hivi ndio lita litakuwa lita sawa sawa kwa hiyo it's, it's important watu wawe na mentorship lakini sio god father per se kwa ajili ya ku elimisha tu kichwani mimi naangalia watu wengi kwenye siasa naangalia mtu mwingine kwenye muziki naangalia mtu mwingine na not necessarily kwamba wanani mentor kwa kukaa nao chini yani naweza kujifunza tu kwa sababu mimi namsikiliza mtu tu na naamini najifunza kutoka kwake kupita kiasi. You know I watch movies a lot. And uh, I watch uh, organized crime movies zaidi. <laughs> Na my favorite movie ni The Godfather One. Sasa you would say uh, Godfather One is about crime na everything. Lakini there's a lot ya kujifunza kutoka kwenye hiyo movie. Jinsi principles za maisha jinsi watu wanavyotakiwa kubalance kile ambacho wanakifanya mtaani na mapenzi yao kwa familia. Na imagine this is a is a is a crime boss. Is a uh, Don Corleone. Yeah. Vitu wanavyofanya ni crime huko. Lakini mapenzi yake kwa familia. Kwa hiyo ni vitu vimekaa mbali alafu ameweza kubalance. Yaani kuna vitu vingi vya kujifunza kutoka hapo. Hiyo peke yake yani inaweza ikakumenta na ukajua kwamba nini unachotaka kufanya when dealing with your uh, personal businesses na family matters. 
Kwa hivyo kwenye siasa najifunza kwa watu wengi uh, kwenye muziki hali kadhalika I wouldn't want to speak names right now lakini uh, na jifunza na, na, na jifanyie mentoring kwa kupitia kwa watu wengi na nafanya mwenyewe Mwanafa wewe ni mtu ambaye uko busy sana kumbuka hata kuweza kuja kukaa hapa na sisi nimechukua muda mrefu sana kupata so pia una familia una familia una watoto na una majukumu mengi ya serikali pia ya kwako binafsi kama msanii unawezaje kupata hiyo work life balance uh, it's uh, it's hard na it's getting harder kila siku sasa hivi uh, kwa sababu shughuli ni nyingi kusema kweli kazi ya ubunge peke yake yenyewe ina ina commitments nyingi sana lakini uh, unajaribu kuhakikisha watoto wako hawakui bila wewe around unajaribu kuhakikisha hakuna jukumu ambalo linakupita ulitakiwa ulifanye na ulifanye na ukishindwa kulifanya utaomba msamaha na ulipangie ufanye rain check ulipangie muda mwingine wa kulifanya ngumu kusema kweli kwa bahati nzuri kidogo mimi zara yangu inaniruhusu kwenda kushuhudia mpira kwa nini lakini otherwise nafikiri ningekosa hata muda wa kufanya vitu hivyo but uh, ninachojaribu kukwambia ni kwamba kuna umuhimu sana wa kupanga ratiba yako well, well you have 24 hours in, a, in every day na siku zile zile 365 366 on a repia lakini uh, unachotakiwa kujua ni kwamba muda wangu ni huu na majukumu yangu ni haya hili nitalifanya muda gani hili nitalifanya muda muda upi na isitokee sije ikatokea kwamba ukakosa muda wa familia ukishindwa okay, kupata muda wa familia you are not a man enough then na ukishindwa kufanya majukumu yako maana yake huyastahili majukumu haya. Kwa hivyo regardless mimi sijui hata naifanyaje lakini naweza kupanga majukumu yangu, nikapanga muda na familia yangu na nikapata muda hata wa kufanya mambo binafsi na yapenda tu binafsi ambayo sio ya familia na sio ya ya, ya uh, majukumu yangu ya kila siku. Talking on, on that just a brief just to briefly come back what you face does not mean kwamba labda anamtaka kwa lazima ya face unajua kwenye interview ile sema kwamba wewe ulikuwa without a dad but you wanted to ensure that maybe for example once you didn't know how it was to be loved by a dad so but you wanted to ensure that your kid ana anapata tofauti kabisa experience tofauti kabisa no for the people that are watching unajua kuna wengine mimi mshafikia mtu mtu mmoja kabisa anasema kwamba mimi mzangu ni treat hivi tutu wangu namchit vile vile niko na chapa lazima na mimi nichape yani hataki kubadilisha it doesn't matter to be disciplined okay but they don't want to change some things so for example for someone who's watching na yeye hajakuwa without dad and I'll make sure kwamba ah that's really matter to give him the love what do you have to say for such a mentality uh, these things uh, can make you or break you you know Uh, I know a lot of people ambao walipitia experience kama ya kwangu ama tofauti kidogo lakini waka ikawafanya mahusiano yao na familia zao sasa isiwe yasiwe mazuri na I know a lot of people ambao mahusiano yao yalikuwa mazuri na familia zao lakini wao wakagoa astray uh, uh, kwa hivyo uh, Hivi tu vinaweza kukufanya vika ku make or break wakati mwingine watu kwa sababu wamelelewa vizuri wanaamini it's just a simple thing hawaoni thamani kwenye namna ambavyo wanatakiwa kuishi na familia zao wakati mwingine wakati kwa sababu watu wamelelewa vibaya wakaona kwamba this is how it's supposed to be kama mimi niliweza kukua kwenye mazingira haya mtoto wangu ataweza kukua kwenye mazingira haya pia kwangu nafikiri imekuwa tofauti mimi uh, namna nilivyokuwa I wouldn't want my kids to go through that. Na naamini relationship yangu na mzee wangu ni quiet opposite na relationship yangu na watoto wangu. Na na huwa na kuwa na bado kakasi no, no no big deal lakini napata ukakasi sana kwenye nikiona watu wanatelekeza watoto eh 
ama watu wana watesa watoto wao na kadhalika yani inanipa inanipa feelings fani hivi nashindwa kuelewa huyu anaweza kuwa mtu wa namna gani kwa, uh, kwa hivyo uh, ni seme tu naamini kila mtoto anastahili kupata love ya mzazi uh, regardless umelelewa namna gani should not make you bitter uh, regardless umelelewa namna gani should should not make you uh, uh, less caring eh, kwa sababu tu wewe ulio kuna aina fulani ya malezi uliyopata Nginevyo tunaweza tukatengeneza watu huko mtaani wako bita tu kwa sababu wamekosa malezi ya wazazi tu. Wengine tumepata bahati tumeweza ku turn out uh, namna tulivyo. Uh, lakini tungeweza kuwa chochote. Na ni kwa sababu tu ya yale mazingira ambayo tulikulia. Mimi hakuna mtu alikuwa ananiuliza kama nimeenda shule au madrasa ni kwa najia ndio ile nilikuwa nakwambia na ajifanye mental mwenyewe. Huko anaenda mwenyewe. Yes. Hakuna mtu alikuwa ananiuliza ehe umepata ngapi shule? Darasani umepata ngapi? Hili ni even matter. Mm. Eh yani lakini I will do all that to my kids. Kuhakikisha kwamba hakuna hatua ambayo tumeachana. Yes. Now coming to an end to our podcast uh, you wanted to get into politics because you wanted to help people because of your background too now why did you feel the need to do this and how is it going about and also when it comes to music and also politics what legacy do you want to leave behind ya kusaidia watu kama ambavyo nilijibu wakati tunaongelea kuhusiana na namna nilivyoingia kwenye politics one take and a mean i always calculate <laughs> hata kwenye mziki me my first song was a hit big one i didn't try na niambie kwamba ah ndo anaanza wimbo wake wa kwanza no bro if we can do this we can do this mimi nilikuwa nikikaa kwenye ile hiyo nasikiliza nyimbo zilizoko redioni kabla sijatoka na unaona hao wote mimi nawaweza yani yeah, you, you know that feeling eh? ni kama mnavyocheza mpira unaona watu wanacheza viwango vyao vidogo ukiingia wewe unakuwa Diego ba. ndo mimi nilivyokuwa naona sasa uh, yale ambayo tulikubaliana wakati wa tunataka kuingia kwenye politics kwamba mimi i had a checklist na miongoni mwa vitu tulivyokuwa tunaamini ni kwamba je vitu hivi ninazotaka kwenda kuwafanyia watu naweza kuvifanya yes i can na tunasaidia watu kwa kasi nzuri sana uh, big up na shukrani nyingi kwa mheshimiwa rais tena tumekuwa na serikali sikivu mno na sisi kama wabunge kazi yetu imekuwa rahisi kwa sababu yale yote ambayo tunaenda kuyasema kuhusiana na matatizo ya wananchi wetu yanafanyiwa kazi hapo hapo na yote ni kwa sababu ya maono ya mheshimiwa rais ameamua kwamba hili ndio anataka liwe hivi kwa hivyo nimepata bahati kwamba nimeingia kwenye wakati mzuri lakini naamini kimbele mbele mimi napaki mabasi sana kwenye ofisi za watu yani pale tamisemi kama mimi naitaka shule nitaenda kukaa pale nitashinda siku nzima na itakuwa tu umeona kwa hivyo kwa hivyo uh, na kwa sababu wamewezeshwa na mheshimiwa rais basi wanaweza kudeliva uh, kwa hivyo kazi ambayo tumeomba kwa wananchi tunaifanya kwa nguvu nyingi sana pengine sio yote ambayo tulikuwa tumeyasema tutakuwa tumeyatekeleza tume, tumeyatekeleza lakini tuko na dhamira inaonekana na wananchi wanajua hiyo dhamira ni ya dhati na ambayo yamefanywa yamefanywa sana kwa kipindi hiki na yale ambayo hayajefanywa unaiona kabisa kwamba bwana kuna mahali tunaenda hatutakuwa hapa tulipo. Nitakupa mfano mmoja. Pale Muheza kulikuwa na matatizo mawili makubwa zaidi. Kwanza maji pale Muheza mjini. Sehemu yote ni ina vijiji, kwa hiyo kuna matatizo lakini angalau sehemu nyingine unaweza kuchimba visima na kadhalika. Sasa pale Muheza mjini mji ulitengenezwa ukiwa na watu ukiwa na watu 1800 back in a day 70s maybe or before that kwa hiyo kwa kaona kama mji 
Sasa hivi mji una 10 times idadi iliyokuwa kipindi hicho. Lakini mfumo wa maji uko vile vile. Kwa hivyo kuna tatizo kubwa la maji. Kwa hiyo ilikuwa tatizo la kwanza. Lakini pili muheza iko sehemu mbili. Kuna muheza hii bonde chini huko, lakini kuna muheza mlimani kule Amani. Hii barabara ya kutoka muheza mpaka Amani ilikuwa mbaya kwa miaka. Umeona? So in uh, kuanzia 2015 mpaka 20 uh, mheshimiwa aliyokuwa mbunge pale mzee Dadi akapambana kukapatikana mpaka mkandarasi na nini. Sasa mbinde inakuja kwenye kuhakikisha barabara inaendelea. Wakawa wameanza kutengeneza pale kilomita saba za kwanza lakini yakamilika zikawa zimetengenezwa siku kilomita ngapi? Kwa hivyo mimi kazi yangu ikawakwenda kupaka mabasi nilipoingia. Na ulipo ukienda amani kitu cha kwanza unachokwambia ni shida ya barabara. Sasa sasa hivi barabara imefika kilomita 14 imeshajengwa. Na tunapoendelea barabara ina jumla kilomita 38. Tutaimaliza tu. Lakini ukienda kule juu amani sasa hivi wakati ndio lilikuwa tatizo la kwanza hawaisee hawalisemi tena tatizo hilo. Unakwambia tunataka kituo cha afya misalai, tunataka ambulance, tunataka sijui nini. Vitu vyote shule hapa watoto wanaenda pale shule hapa visima maji yanatoka mlimani lakini tu address yaje kijijini na vitu hivyo. Hakuna anayesema ya barabara. You know why? Kwa sababu wameshaiona dhamira barabara haijaisha lakini dhamira ya mheshimiwa rais ya kuhakikisha barabara ile na inakamilika na sisi vimbele mbele kwenda kupiga kelele kuhakikisha kwamba barabara inakuja imeonekana na wananchi kabisa kwa mioyo meupe wameamua kudili na matatizo mengine ili wanajua limesha shughulikiwa. Mradi wa maji hapa chini kama ambavyo nimesema kuna mradi wa wahindi wa maji wa wahindi ule ambao sisi muheza pekee yetu tunapata bilioni 40 kwa ajili ya kutekeleza mradi wa maji kwenye kata 17. Sasa moja ya majimbo makubwa kabisa kwa kata 37. Sasa so, mradi wanaona kabisa mabomba yameshaanza kuingizwa vifaa yani miundo mbinu ya maji ile imeshaanza kufunguliwa na, na kadhalika ambao tunatoa maji kwenye mto pangani. Na lenyewe linaenda kuwa historia tu lakini kila mtu analiona. So uh, wakati mwingine kama ninavyosema matatizo yanakuwa haya tatulika lakini dhamira ilivyo ya dhati na inaonekana kabisa kinachofanyika ile wananchi wanajua kabisa kwamba bwana yale tuliyoahidiana kwamba huyu anataka kutusaidia yanafanyika yana kusema kweli so yeah tunaifanya kazi ya kusaidia wananchi kama tulivyosema tunataka kufanya kwa nguvu nyingi na yale ambayo yako ndio ni uwezo wa binadamu ni uhakikishie yatafanyika tu ile moja kwenye alama ambazo nataka kuwaje kama ambavyo nimesema narudia mara nyingi mimi nataka kuachwa alama kama somo ama kama mwalimu mimi nataka kuwafundisha wataka ubaki nyuma yangu kwamba vitu vinaowezekana ah nakumbuka mmeniambia hapo bwana jambo la mtu kutoka kwenye sanaa akaenda kumbunga kaenda kwa waziri not common nikamwambia alijawahi kutokea not just not common na sasa hivi lakini limeshatokea hata kikuje mwingine na wewe bwana hiki kitu kinakisha set president kwamba kitu hiki kinawezekana kufanyika hizo ndo alama mimi nazotaka kuifanya hakukuwa na na mtu nyuma ambaye anaamini unaweza ukaenda toto to, to na multi billion company mahakamani for seven years na ukashinda we did right Hakuwa na mtu ambaye anaamini kwamba sheria inaweza ikabadilika kwa sababu wewe shauri lako limeonekana lina make sense na uh, sheria ilikuwa imeache kuna upenyo hapa. We did that. Hakuwa na mtu anaweza kujua kama one man army unaweza kwenda ukakomana kosota kukaja sheria sio za collective management organization badala ya kosota kuanza kukusanya na kugawa miraba. We did that. Yaani kuna vitu vingi vingine sheria kadhaa zinabadilika kwa ajili ya yale ambayo tunayafanya tunajaribu kueleza tunajaribu kuyaacha hizo ndio legacy za ambazo mimi nataka kuacha again nataka ni somo nataka nibaki kama mwalimu hata siku ambapo nitaondoka duniani kwa sababu sitaishi milele mheshimiwa thank you very much for joining us we know you have a very busy schedule but you made time for us and we appreciate i personally i learned a lot of stuff i know Musa you did too and i know the person that you're watching you have learned don't re- no regrets he has made it he we in our terms we say he has made his, he's making his own destiny he has made his own destiny and he has found his path and i have taken a lot of that i have taken a lot of things because 
he came, we say, from rags to riches because for him, everything's against him. He grew up without a father. He was mentoring himself, as he was saying. He made sure that he made it out. And by the grace of God, he did. Now, uh, we want to end the episode here. But before we do, we want to give a big shout out to Black Concept Group for letting us use their boardroom. As you know, we also have an episode with Berva. Make sure you guys click the link to go watch it. Mishimiwa, the number one be like, comment, now subscribe. Kwa hisani yenu, Hamis Mwinjuma, Mwanefei, Mbunge wa Muheza, na naibu waziri wa utamaduni sana na michezo. Na waomba msiache kukoment, kulike, na kusubscribe. That's it for today.